You may have come across or seen pictures of such special camera structures. These are camera array setups that are used, for example, in photogrammetry and creating 3D models. But this can be used also for other purposes. Perhaps the most famous is the bullet time effect, which was created in the Matrix movie using numerous cameras. In real life, such devices are very expensive and complicated to build. But what if you could build these arrays virtually and modify it inside a 3D program? Let me show you. Hello, it's Olli here again. This time I want to introduce a new tool that I have recently developed for the Blender software. It is a camera array tool that works as a normal add-on inside the Blender. It can be installed in Blender's sidebar with the regular installation routine via the preference menu. The tool itself works very simply. But at first let's clear the stage and remove all these Blender's default cube, light and camera out of the way. Then we can create, for example, a cylinder primitive. I press Shift A and select the cylinder here. Then I'm adjusting the cylinder's values a bit here in the lower corner. I set vertices to 16. And since I don't need caps for this object, I change this value to nothing. Okay, then I modify the object a bit and add some loop cuts to it. And now our object is ready for the camera arraying. In the camera array tool, I have this invert option turned on by default. I make sure that my cylinder is selected and then I just press this Create Cameras button. A number of cameras now appear on the inner surface of the cylinder. And if we take a closer look at their position, we notice that the cameras appear in the middle of each face. So this is the basic idea of this tool. It generates cameras on the surfaces of any object. And as many of them appear as there are polygons in the object. These cameras point towards the inner surface of the cylinder, and since the inward option was selected in the menu, the cameras point towards inside using the normal of the polygon surface. If we select the cylinder and scale it, we can see that the camera setup is following with the object and stays attached to the polygons. Objects can be manipulated and stretched in many ways. We can scale it heights or make it oval and we see that camera stays in the inner surface of it. And as you might guess, the menu also has the opposite option for placing the cameras. Let's create, for example, another object, an icosphere and select the Outward option now. And when we press the Create Cameras button, the cameras appear outer side of this sphere. This kind of a camera array setup would be impractical for the purpose for which we are going to use this, but it is always useful to have these options available. In the menu, it is possible to create cameras in both directions as well. This option might come in handy if, for example, you want to shoot pictures of a room model and scan the pictures in both directions. Then this array can be used, for example, on the grid plane object like this. But all in all, you can notice that camera array tool is pretty versatile and you can modify it almost any way you want. You should notice also that the object where you create the camera array changes in the wireframe mode and it automatically switches the visibility button off in here, so it cannot be seen in the rendering. 
This way you will have a clear background for your 3D elements, which you plan to shoot with this rig. Ok, let's test this virtual camera array in practical use. I like to use a Blender Kit library, where I can easily upload some 3D models in the Blender. I place this girl figure inside my camera array and make some adjustments. There is also a focal length slider, with which it is possible to change the FOV value of every camera at once. When the 3D model is in center of this gauge and surrounded such amount of cameras, we can start thinking about rendering process. But before that I drop some HDR image to the background to give some light to the rendering. I only want to get the lightning from the HDR picture, so I set the background to transparency mode. All typical rendering parameters can be adjusted behind the Blender's own output settings. I like to make square images, so I put 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels in here. But the output path where we want these array images to be saved must be entered through the camera array tool. And now that all is set up, we can start rendering the camera array. And it happens from this Render Cameras button here. You can check the content of the folder in File Explorer and see how the rendered images will drop in there one by one. Since I'm using the EV rendering engine, the rendering speed is very quick and all these 192 images are completed quite fast. But where can we use these image series then? One idea is of course to use them in Gaussian splatting training. And for that we can use Jawset's excellent postchart program. You can easily drag the finished images into the postchart and start generating the Gaussian model. The splat model is created through the normal process where the images are first analyzed and a sparse point cloud is produced using the cold map method. Since the images were rendered in PNG format with the alpha channel, which means that the background has been cut out of them, a very clean and light point cloud can be processed relatively quickly out of them. But we have to remember that since the images have no background, they have much less important pixel information on them, so the process may not always be successful. Therefore, there should be enough rendered shows images. 200 to 500 images is a good amount, but at least there should be always more than 100 of them. When the point cloud is formed, the actual Gaussian splatting training can begin. And it is interesting to notice how neat and reasonably accurate splat model is created from a 3D model. It has hardly any floating artifacts, and the model will gain more and more accuracy as the iteration steps goes further in the training. Since the Gaussian splatting process is like this and is based on the source images, this is actually the only way at the moment to convert existing 3D models to 3D GS format. And now the camera array tool that I've been developing offers one possibility for this through the Blender. If you are interested in this tool and you think it will be useful for you, I have published it on my Gumroad online store. You can purchase the camera array tool in there and of course you can also find the link in the description of this video. I greatly appreciate if you are interested in getting this add-on. This helps my channel and my research work and I can continue to produce interesting video content for all of you. What is your opinion about this? For what purposes would you see that this camera array tool could be used? Leave your comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning, the bullet time effect 
I've been thinking about that perhaps this kind of a virtual camera array setup could also be used in so-called 4G GS productions, where moving Gaussian spatting models could be created. But that's another topic that still needs some development. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, goodbye.